Human beings have been measuring the level of solids and liquids for thousands of years. Ever since the time of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt, there have been level meters. Today, we sometimes do it the same way as the Egyptians did, and sometimes we do it with ultramodern technology. Hi, this is Walt Boyce, editor of Control and ControlGlobal.com, with another edition of our Market Intelligence Report series for the Process Automation Media Network and YouTube's Automation TV. We asked our readers to tell us how they use level instrumentation and tank gauging systems. Over 120 readers responded, and we learned some interesting things that we'd like to share with you. We found that most of you are migrating away from point level systems. Over 57% of our readers said that point level systems comprise only 20% or less of their level applications. Only 13% said they still used point level for more than 50% of applications, while about 29% said they used point level between 20 and 50% of the time. And just to confirm it, over 60% of the respondents said they use continuous level instrumentation more than 50% of the time. An additional 25% said they used continuous level instrumentation between 20 and 50% of the time. Interestingly, while many regulators and safety experts want multiple level technologies on critical level applications, most people are using point and continuous level on only a small number of vessels. More than 36% use both technologies on fewer than 10% of their applications. When we asked what technologies for measuring level that our readers preferred, we got an interesting result. While you could expect that the most common means of measuring level would be differential pressure, two newer technologies came in second and third, guided wave radar and ultrasonic level gauges. Fear not, however, that level measurement gurus are abandoning the tried and true. Mechanical at 41% and electromechanical gauge systems at 12% still account for a significant chunk of continuous level measurement applications. In fact, when we ask not which the respondents preferred, but which one they actually used the most, differential pressure at 41% and floats and other mechanical gauges at 16% came in a strong one, too. That's a combined 57% vote for the old standby technologies. But even here, the new sneaks in. Guided wave radar was third with just over 14% of readers using it the most. Automation professionals tend to pick a horse and stick with it as far as they can ride it. Almost half of our respondents said that they use their favorite technology at least half the time. One of the regulatory requirements that's becoming felt in the refining and chemical industries is the need for a backup level system that uses a completely different technology than your primary level measurement system does. We wondered just how that was going and found that it was not going very well. Almost half of our respondents said no, they were not using or going to use, in the next 12 to 18 months at least, a backup level technology. Even more concerning, almost 22% asked what backup level technology was. Wireless sensor network vendors have been pointing to tank gauging applications as a big market for them for at least five years now. It looks like they may have to wait some more. Over 86% of our respondents said they had not installed wireless tank gauging systems in their plants. And even more interesting, after all the propaganda about the utility of wireless systems for tank gauging, more than 71% of respondents said they were not going to install a wireless tank gauging system in the next 12 to 18 months. But it isn't that they aren't paying attention to the wireless standards war. When asked which standard they planned to use, 41% said wireless heart, while 21% chose 802.11 Wi-Fi or another proprietary protocol. Only 12.35% chose ISA 100.11a, and even fewer, just under 5%, chose Zigbee. And the wireless protocol they'll be using when they do install wireless tank gauging systems. So there you have it. There's movement in even the most venerable of automation technologies. I found it interesting that guided wave radar has been so successful, while open air radar has been less so. 
Only 6% of respondents say they used it the most, where over 14% said they used guided wave radar the most. Now we've brought you up to speed on the state of the market in level gauging. This has been a market intelligence report on level instrumentation and tank gauging systems from Automation TV and the Process Automation Media Network. I'm Walt Boys. Thanks for watching.